Welcome back to War Paint TV Wednesday, November 18th, 2009. Once again, I am Shane Williams. And I'm Pat Clifton. And we are here at Arrowhead Stadium reporting news directly from the Kansas City Chiefs practice facility. Patrick, let's get right to it. As I said at the top of the show here on a personal note, today is my 40th birthday, November 18th, 2009, and I have one birthday wish, and that is for none other than the Kansas City Chiefs to defeat the Pittsburgh Steelers this Sunday afternoon right here at Arrowhead Stadium. The question I have for you, Patrick, is what has to happen out here for my birthday wish to come to fruition? Uh, a minor miracle. No, uh, I mean, it's the NFL, so it's possible. Any team can beat anybody on any given Sunday is a cliche, but... You know, they're going to have to eliminate turnovers. They can't turn the ball over at all. Matt Castle's going to have to protect the ball, which he's done pretty well most of the season. And uh, the Steelers are going to have to turn the ball over. Uh, Roethlisberger's going to have to slow down because he's been fantastic this year, um, as he has been most of his career. But this has been a good year for him. And they're going to have to get him to turn the ball over. And they're going to have to get the Steelers running backs to turn the ball over as well. Um, the Chiefs are going to have to continue to get ground, uh, gain on the ground. Because uh, they're not going to go out there and outscore anybody, so they're going to have to t milk the time on the clock, um, and the defense is going to have to get off the field quick. Uh, those are things that have to happen in every football game for you to get a W, but uh, in order for you to get a W against a good team like the Steelers, the Chiefs are really going to have to perfect those areas. What concerns me about what the Chiefs are doing on third and short and on fourth and short, uh, they're not following their big center. Rudy Nicewanger, who comes in at six foot five, three hundred five pounds. Uh, it's no secret. He struggled. He's been struggling this uh, year in passing situations, as well as third and one and fourth and one. As you see, the Chiefs running more uh, draws, pitch outs. Uh, do you see Wade Smith coming in later on later on this season to compete with Nicewanger since he has been struggling, or do you think this is Nicewanger's uh, job to lose? What's your opinion on Rudy Nicewanger? Well, I think it's his job to lose, but I think he's doing a, a decent job of doing so. Uh, Rudy, you know, he got his first starts last year. Uh, that's when he really got his chance to be the starter for this team, and he just hasn't capitalized on it. Uh, a lot of people question it because he's of his size. He is 6'5", 6'4", uh, depending on where you look, and that's pretty tall for a center. You have to be low as a center, get low, get your leverage, and you have to be a mean guy. Like, like, like Todd Haley's always said, the nose tackle and the defensive tackle, that's a nasty position. That's a man's job. Well, the guy across from him is a center or a guard, and those people have to be nasty, nasty men too. And there's no doubt in my mind Rudy Nicewanger has a body to be a, a decent NFL player, but he's just, I don't know if he has a nastiness, and I don't think he's got the perfect body to be a center. He's just a little too tall, takes him a little too long to unravel his body and come off the blocks and, uh, you know, get a surge on the offensive line. I just, Rudy Nicewanger is a guy who's going to fill the gap for last year and this year, but I don't think he's a guy you want if you want a power running game going forward. And, and it's not just him. Andy Allman uh, has struggled at right guard. He got blown back a couple you know, quite a few times last week. Uh, the interior offensive line has to get better. It really has to get better. And that's something they're going to have to address in the offseason. Um, they've got a guy here in Ikechuku and Duque who I think could be a good interior offensive lineman. And I think he, uh, that's what he played last year in Miami when he got 15 starts. Uh, I think uh, in Duque, uh, I hope to see him uh, give us a shot at right guard this year and maybe get Alleman a shot at center, which is where he played most of the time last year in Miami. So uh, the interior offensive line, a lot of those guys could trade in and trade out. Wade Smith is a guy who I think might be a career backup. He's, a, he's one of those renaissance men. He's the guy they threw at left tackle uh, when Brandon Albert went out. Uh, he can play every position. He's a utility guy. Uh, but I don't know that he's necessarily a starter. And I don't know that Rudy Nicewanger or Andy Alleman are starters either. Dwayne Bowe's out four games. What wide receiver on the Chiefs roster will benefit the most with Dwayne Bowe's absence? Um, you know, who's going to benefit the most immediately is going to be Bobby Wade because now there's really not much of a question he's going to be active for the first time in two games. Um, he's been sat down the last couple of weeks, and that's a roster thing. They've got a lot of receivers on this team. They've got a lot of areas in need other than receiver, like offensive line, where they need to stockpile players. And you can only put 53 players in jerseys. Um, so, you know, I think Bobby Wade's going to immediately uh, – at first glance, get the most benefit. But who's going to benefit the most is who goes out there and plays the best. Lance Long has a chance. He's getting, you know, he's been getting the ball thrown to him a lot lately, but he's going to get probably even a few more balls thrown to him. Uh, Chris Chambers is going to have a chance to get maybe even a few more balls thrown to him. And maybe Bobby Wade gets back on that field and gets some balls thrown to him. So whoever benefits the most is going to be up to those guys. Who steps up, who actually takes uh, the onus on them and uh, makes the plays. And from our own at WarPaintIllustrated.com forums, Big Chief. 
His question is: Is new fullback Tim Castillo the new? Is it? Is you think he'll replace Mike Cox pretty soon, or do you think uh, give him a couple games? What do you think on Tim Castillo coming in? Well, I think Mike Cox is a guy who's gone the entire season without much competition. There's been nobody here since the beginning of the season to challenge him, and uh, competition is the best way to breed uh, the best play on the field. Is to constantly have somebody behind you to push him. Um, that's what they've been doing in every position. They did it at safety with Jared Page. They did it, you know, with Larry Johnson. They've done it. They do it all across the board, and uh, he's had nobody to push him. Not do I think Mike Cox is the reason that the Chiefs haven't had a solid running game all year? Certainly not. You can't lay that all on Mike Cox or a fullback. He can't block six guys up the middle. Um, but is there a chance that uh, Castillo will come in and, he, and he'll take that job? Yeah, sure. Look at Leonard Pope. Uh, similar situation. He's a guy that uh, Todd Haley had in Arizona. Coach before was his own guy. He brought him in. Uh, and a player that has been here before, and the incumbent players have kind of fallen to the wayside. Brad Cottom has not gotten much playing time this year. And a lot of that has to do with Sean Ryan and, and, uh, and uh, Leonard Pope are two guys that Todd Haley brought in himself. So it's quite possible that's going to happen at fullback, too. You are all eyes, ears in the Chiefs locker room throughout the season. I understand there's some points you'd like to make to Warpaint TV viewers this, a- this afternoon. Sure. It's just, you know, if you like what you see, check us out on the web. You know, I'm here four days a week. I'm at practice generally four days a week. Uh, I'm in the press conferences every week. There's no other independent, uh, independent website that covers the Chiefs like we do. Uh, so come check us out. Uh, we got good stuff on the website. Come on over to the mothership, warpaintillustrated.com, uh, and check out and see what we got going on there. And also hit us up on Facebook. Um, so uh, our message boards on our website are uh, the, the best community around to talk Chiefs. So make sure you come by the website. You heard it here first from warpaintillustrated.com's very own Patrick Clifton. And for Shane Williams, Justin Olson, and the entire staff at warpaintillustrated.com, thank you.